Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar entitled Connecting to Excellence, the Green Chemistry Innovation Portal. Because a little background about our two organizations, the Green Chemistry and Commerce Council was founded in 2005 and is a cross-sectoral business-to-business network of over 70 companies and other organizations dedicated to advancing green chemistry across sectors and supply chains. GC3 members range from major chemical companies and small green chemistry startups all the way along the value chain to major brands and retailers and other organizations such as academic institutions and government agencies and nonprofits. The main goal of the Green Chemistry and Commerce Council is to mainstream green chemistry, which is a point in time where all chemistry is by default green chemistry. For that purpose, the Green Chemistry Innovation Portal represents an important tool to build the community of green chemistry practitioners, to connect those who have green chemistry challenges with those who have green chemistry solutions. In essence, as Hillary Clinton likes to put it, we're building a village. And with that village, we can build a much bigger community that can accelerate green chemistry, research development, and adoption in the marketplace. And to introduce the Green Chemistry Institute of the ACS, David Constable, who is the director of the Green Chemistry Institute. David? Thanks, Joel, for that introduction. Welcome, everybody, today. It's great to be here. The ACS Green Chemistry Institute was originally started in 1997. It came into the ACS in 2001. And one of the things that we've been trying to do uh, recently is to engage you uh, to reimagine chemistry and engineering for a sustainable future. Why is that important? It's because chemistry as it's currently practiced is not sustainable. And we really need to change that, uh, that uh, practice. So we have been trying to do that by three main strategic thrusts. The first is to advance the science around chemistry to incorporate greener and more sustainable practices. The second is really to change the educational system, that is how we educate uh, chemists and chemical engineers. Uh, and finally, the last way we, we do that is to interact with industry. We have uh, four industrial roundtables, uh, many multinational uh, corporations, and uh, aligned according to industry sectors. And our uh, desire there is really to accelerate the implementation of uh, green chemistry. So our mission is to catalyze and enable the implementation of green chemistry and engineering throughout the global chemistry enterprise. And we're really in the business of convening students and academics, industry people uh, in the global chemistry enterprise to catalyze innovative thinking, to facilitate critical conversations, and, and communicate general values and benefits of green chemistry. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Joel. Great. Thank you, David. So for today's initial webinar of the Green Chemistry Innovations Portal, we have three fantastic speakers. Uh, John Fraser, who is one of the inspirations for the portal, is both on the GC3 Advisory Committee and the ACS GCI Governing Board. John was formerly for more than a decade the Director of Design Chemistry and Green Chemistry for Nike. Tom McKig is the Program Director for the Berkeley Center for Green Chemistry. And the Berkeley Center for Green Chemistry is a leader in the area of both research and education around green chemistry as well as connecting academic work with industry to accelerate the green chemistry marketplace. Lastly, Anna Ivanova is a green chemist with the Green Chemistry and Commerce Council, and she has been leading the effort to build the Green Chemistry Innovation Portal. And with that, let me welcome John to the webinar. Thanks, John. Well, happy uh, Monday, everybody. It's great to be here. I, I think this should uh, bring a lot of questions out, but also hopefully connect a lot of folks to the portal. So on, on the bright side, folks, it, it's great that there is a lot of excitement and optimism in the, in the green chemistry commercial, uh, community. Uh, the conferences are well attended. Uh, many times they're attended by first-time uh, visitors. Uh, so there's a lot of excitement pulling people toward you know, what we can do with green chemistry. How do we apply it and make our products not only better but make them uh, safer in the long run? Sometimes, however, the industry seems separated from, from researchers. And, and I was always really surprised by that um, as, as, I, as I worked trying to, to uh, bridge between a company and the green chemistry space out there. 
And as a colleague used to say, it, it's and I, and I know those of you who know Andy will know who I'm talking about here. But he used to always talk about how sometimes there was a disconnect between the technical side in in a, in a, a company and a technical side in the chemical research or um, those who who are actually making the chemistry. He used to he used to use a phrase that it was like chickens talking to ducks. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide here. So from the industry side, some of the drivers of the portal. Uh, again, industry is often separated from technical researchers. So what I found interesting is that within a company, we don't do a good job of a lot of times telling the chemical researchers exactly what we need. And, and sometimes even within a, within a large brand or even a small brand in industry, they don't have a lot of the deep technical resources. So a lot of times they don't have people that they can dedicate to being able to give that message out, or they don't have a way to frame it in a way that it makes a lot of sense to the, the technical researchers. So again, going back to the, the need for that technical bridge, you know, a lot of times I would hear the question, especially at some of the green chemistry conferences, is how do I solve and then you fill in the blank. There, there's a lot of questions, a lot of folks wanting to know how they solve something or how they get rid of a certain type of chemistry. And you know, other questions would be, has anyone ever done? And then again, you can insert your own, your own problem statement there. And a lot of it came back down to who can they talk to? Who can they talk to about engaging chemistry in a different way? Because they, a lot of times you may be a one man band or a one person band in some of these brands and there's a lot of challenges out there, and more challenges than there are people to, to handle them a lot of times. So from the researcher's point, I, I was also really surprised a lot of times that they didn't really know what problems to be solving for industry. So they would have a lot of solutions that, shockingly, were in need of a problem. So a, a, a large chemical company would come up with a solution and then bring it to us brands and say, here, look what we've done. We, you know, we've spent millions of dollars. We have invested all of this time and, and effort. Isn't this wonderful? And the industry would come back to them and like, well, that, that's not going to that's not gonna perform well the way we need it to. Here's what we really want. And, and sometimes we wouldn't even do a good job of saying what we really want. So the idea is out here of how do you, how do you start that communication and keep that communication going with the use of a portal where it's, it's almost like, Match.com for for nerds. How do you how do you connect the researcher world with the brands in a way where people can post what a problem is and if it's a public problem if it's something they're comfortable putting that in that public space how do they put it out there in a way that researchers can say oh you know what we could try this on that or I've already done this research that would be a great application for it and and on the other side of that. You might have researchers being able to say, I've been able to do this, this, or this, and see somebody in a brand have a problem, connect to it, and, and find that application. So trying to, to match up the two very ends of a, uh, a research and need end of, of a chem chemistry spectrum is really what it drove us to the idea of, of creating this portal. You know, so we can get away from the questions like, I didn't know your industry needed whatever it is. And nobody ever told us what you were trying to solve. And I had no idea who I could even talk to in industry or in the brands. So again, we needed this matchmaking tool. You know, the good news is that innovation is out there, lots of it. We're just not doing a great job of connecting with each other um, as of yet. So the, the tool that we've come up with here, and, and Anna and Joel will get into it in a little bit, is how do we, how do we tap that, that green chemistry network? Um, and how do we tap into the, the network that includes uh, the American Chemical Society, which has got hundreds if not thousands of, of chemists and, and chemical engineers? Um, how do we tap into the folks like uh, Joel's GC3 team? How do we connect to universities and, and supply companies that both need innovation, but they also need it to come in through that lens of sustainability. So that's that's what you're going to hear about next from, from the rest of these guys, and they'll show you some screenshots 
but we hope you'll log on and, and, and post a question or read some questions or keep it in mind the next time you have a problem to solve. We think there's a way you can tap into this bigger organization. All right, I'll, I'll pass this off now. Thanks, everybody. Hey, Tom, welcome to the webinar. Thank you, Joel. Introduce myself and then give a little perspective on the academic side. Uh, we're very excited at the Berkeley Center for Green Chemistry to be part of this webinar, but also, you know, part of this whole process of using this great tool uh, for some of um, the accomplishing parts of our mission. So uh, Berkeley Center for Green Chemistry was started in 2013, and our mission really is to push forward the meme of green chemistry through interdisciplinary scholarship. So we have uh, about 15 graduate fellows in our program who run the gamut from uh, public health to chemistry to engineering, toxicology, environmental science. They are doing research on our dime uh, and coming up with innovative ways to make more sustainable energy or monitor that kind of energy and so on and so forth. We also run uh, three core courses. One is called Greener Solutions, which I'll talk a little bit about later, and uh, an introduction to green chemistry and also a course in the ethics of uh, green chemistry. In addition, we're very proud of the fact that we push forward some of these students who have trained under us into contract or consulting positions with companies. And uh, that's especially uh, germane to this matchmaking we have uh, between uh, companies, corporations, and uh, academia. Um, and then finally, uh, we collaborate with other institutions um, in order to push forward, let's say, uh, initiatives that we feel are uh, do social good. For instance, we're about to partner with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, a UK charity, in their uh, Disruptive Innovation Festival. Um, so that's a little bit about us. As I say, we're really excited about this tool, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how this tool might uh, work for us or has worked for us. As I say, our mission really is to bridge the gap between research and academia and uh, the larger community to have the greatest impact to uh, having people accept more benign chemicals, replacement chemicals for some of the hazardous, hazardous materials that are out there. Uh, and of course, the, some of the people who make the biggest impact are corporation companies, manufacturers. Um, so the portal, I think, is a great thing for helping us in several ways. And one of them is just the networking that, uh, that we can do. For instance, uh, I was noticing if we go to our listing on the, the innovation map, uh, one of two parts to the portal, uh, I can hit a fit button, and that fit button will give me a listing of similar institutions as kind of a first pass in uh, who's doing what and why. And uh, from that, we can screen down to maybe more select list of people uh, and in institutions that we can collaborate with. So really excited about that. Uh, and I like the fact that you, you, know, you can go either to um, uh, a strictly academic screen or uh, an overall screen of companies and uh, academic institutions, or uh, dial down to the regional. So uh, that's, that's very helpful for us in finding partners. And as I say, our, part of our mission is to um, you know, go beyond the campus and make an impact. And to, in order to do that, we, we need to um, partner up with uh, companies, particularly in our Greener Solutions class, which is a project-driven class in which we partner uh, this fall. We're partnering with Autodesk, for example, and Method, a maker of cleaners. We've uh, partnered with Levi's in the past. But anyway, we need to find those companies uh, and in order to partner with them and talk to them about um, you know, what their needs are, their user needs. And the, the uh, innovation portal is a great tool to see who's already you know, aligned with our mission. Uh, so it's a good first pass at seeing, a, you know, commonalities and alignment with some of these companies. Um, so targeting them uh, is is very important to us as we as we go forward and and gain more and more uh, friends out there in the manufacturing and 
and product here. And then uh, thirdly, I'd say uh, staying current with the news about uh, who's doing what and where. It's, it's, it's a simple idea, but it's very important. Uh, for instance, uh, Ken Geyser, you know, the author of uh, Chemicals Without Harm, was just out here at Berkeley talking with our students uh, in between his speaking engagements, uh, talking to them about uh, policy. It's an, a great example of someone outside of Berkeley coming in, giving their expertise to our students um, and our faculty as well about their perspective. We have a lot of um, what we call ESPM students. They're environmental science policy and management students. Because we have such an interdisciplinary approach here, we have students of all stripes. So it's great to be able to have someone come in from outside and uh, give their perspective on something that maybe we don't have as deep a knowledge in. And then finally, uh, you know, I think uh, the innovation portal uh, can be a great educational tool in the classroom. For instance, as I say, we have interdisciplinary students in a lot of them need to ramp up into areas that are beyond their area of expertise. Uh, for instance, we might have a public health person that needs to know a little bit about what's happening in the world of chemistry. And uh, I love the idea that she, uh, she, she or he can, can go to the, the forum part of the portal and uh, just uh, you know, find a moderator for a particular subject and then uh, start uh, searching, as John was saying, searching about who do I talk to? Who do I talk to about, you know, the toxicological effects of certain uh, resins, you know, for 3D printing or something like that? So uh, we're excited about that, and I, and I know the, the portal is, is growing. It's a, you know, it's a creative, uh, ongoing uh, product, and uh, we're really looking forward to, um, you know, using this more and more as a tool in our classroom. So I'd say those four things are really what we're excited about and uh, look forward to, to working more with uh, GC3 and ACS on this uh, portal. Thank you, Tom. And for an overview of the uh, GC3 ACS uh, Green Chemistry Innovation Portal, uh, Anna Ivanova. Anna, thank you for all your hard work in pulling this together. Thanks, Joel, and thanks everybody who's joining us today. It's great to hear that we have so many people interested in the Green Chemistry Innovation Portal. And I'm excited to be here and to hear John and Tom talk about the unique value that they see in the innovation portal, both from an academic and an industrial perspective. So a little bit of background on the actual project of creating the innovation portal. As Joel mentioned, the innovation portal has been developed as a partnership with the American Chemical Society's Green Chemistry Institute. And that col collaboration has been really valuable to both of us. Each organization has been contributing its unique strengths, and it's really been a great example of two green chemistry organizations with the same goal, sharing resources to create a synergetic project. It's a model that we hope to follow more in the future at the GC3. So the Green Chemistry Innovation Portal was intended to connect the green chemistry community outside of conferences. At all of our green chemistry conferences, as John said, we see these great connections and these great partnerships being forged. When problem havers find technology or if they find connections that can solve their problem. But we want to create these sorts of partnerships in a wider space, online and year round, to foster those sorts of collaborations for people who might not be able to attend the conferences or when it's not conference season. So the Innovation Portal is also meant to be a place to share research and read about innovations and green chemistry news. And finally, to demonstrate the size of the green chemistry community in a very visual way. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. So the actual look of the Green Chemistry Innovation Portal, as you'll see if you go to the website that's uh, shown at the bottom here, or for those of you who are listening in, it's www.greenchemistryportal.org. And you can see that there's two tools on the Green Chemistry Innovation Portal. There's the Innovation Map, and there's the Innovation Forum. So you can join us online to explore these tools as we talk about them. The Innovation Map is a visual map of the organizational connections in the green chemistry community. And as I alluded to earlier, this is the tool that we use to demonstrate the size of the green chemistry community and find out who's in it. Uh, we're still updating and expanding the map, so it's going to grow as the community does. But it covers all sectors and all industries, companies, nonprofits, academic institutions, research labs, governments, and more are all on this map. 
And the map is focused on organizations and their connections to specific green chemistry efforts as a gauge to show how connected to the green chemistry community they are. When you load up the map, when you go to greenchemistryportal.org and click on the map on the left, the website that loads up will have a quick how-to guide on the left that tells you about scrolling and clicking on elements to explore it. There's a search function that lets you find a specific company and see if your organization is on the map. And the dynamic interface lets you zoom and pan to browse, or you can change to a regional view, as Tom mentioned, to see who's in your area and who you can connect with. Or you can even view an academic perspective if you're looking only for academic research institutions. So let me show you a quick snapshot of what you'll see when you visit the map. And this is just a small example of an area of the map. But you can see already that the organizations have these beautiful logos that make them easy to find at a glance. And each hub, you can see these um, wheel-like structures here. The hub at the center of each one is a green chemistry effort, such as the GC3 or the ACS GCI, which are shown here at the left and the right. And the spokes that are coming out from these hubs are organizations that are actively involved with that green chemistry effort. So if you hover over one of these elements, as the example shown here is Dow Chemical Company, Covering over an element isolates it and makes it easier to see what green chemistry efforts is connected to. And clicking on each connection, in turn, will give a description of the affiliation at the left of your screen. So you can see here, by clicking on these one by one, you can see that Dow is a member of the GC3, a roundtable round member with the ACS GCI, a signatory of the green chemistry commitment with Beyond Benign, and a contributor to the Center for Sustainable Polymers. So back to the Green Chemistry Innovation Portal. The second of the two tools is the Innovation Forum. And if you go to www.greenchemistryportal.org and click on Innovation Forum at the right, you can view and participate the portal as we're discussing it on the webinar. So the Innovation Forum is really a flexible online space for discussions around green chemistry. And it's meant to foster partnerships and allow people to discuss the latest news or innovations. It's hosted on the ACS network, but anybody can post. You don't have to be an ACS member. You can just create a free ID, uh, or you can post as a guest without creating an account. But creating the free account is great because it allows you to follow discussions, and you can get updates directly to your email inbox without having to go back and check the website regularly. And as you can see, there are a lot of categories you can post in. But if you feel that there should be a category added that you don't see, you can just ask us, as we're happy to make this more for the users than, uh, than a top-down dictatorship, if you will. So the Innovation Forum, I think its greatest strengths are that it's both accessible and it's powerful. So GC3 and GCI moder moderators are constantly monitoring submissions and recruiting answers from experts. You can see the example here on the right is something that actually happened just a few days ago on October 19th. A high school chemistry teacher from Iran asked about green chemistry projects for high school students. And within a couple hours of submitting her question, she got responses from Amy Cannon of Beyond Benign and Julie Hack of GC Ednet, who are both educational experts in green chemistry. So no matter what your question is or how obscure or strange it might seem, GC3 and GCI experts are standing by to make sure that you get an answer quickly. Um, the other strength of the Innovation Forum is that it's really easy to use. So if you've never been to a forum, if that sounds terrifying to you, don't worry. We have how-to videos that will help you get started with it and create your first post. And we also have an Ask a Moderator form, which you can fill out to ask for help of any sort. You can ask for help with using the forum. You can ask, where should I post my question? I don't see a category for it. Or if you want to make a connection, but you have maybe protected information that can't be shared publicly, you can ask a moderator to help you make that connection offline. And we're always happy to do that, because ultimately the goal of the innovation portal is to foster these connections and partnerships and grow the green chemistry community. So visit the website and let us know if anything's not working for you, or ask a moderator for help. So just to quickly sum up, the green chemistry innovation portal has two components. First, the innovation map demonstrates the size and diversity of the green chemistry community. And it allows you to find potential fun partner or funding organizations, which could be used by both academia and industry, as you heard from John and Tom. 
It also lets you explore the map to see green chemistry efforts in your sector or in your area that you might want to learn more about. So if your organization is looking to partner with a green chemistry effort, you can see maybe which ones are your peers working with, and that might be the most appropriate one for you to join. The Innovation Forum, on the other hand, is a flexible communication tool. It's hosted on the ACS network, which is amazing because it averages about 10,000 unique users per month. So that's a lot of potential views that your post will get if you post it on the Green Chemistry Innovation Forum. And the forum also uses GC3 and GCI networks to direct experts to your question. So even if the large audience of the ACS network doesn't have the expert that you're looking for, we will track them down and direct them your way. Finally, the forum lets you keep up with green chemistry news and discussions with updates going straight to your inbox. And that uh, makes it a lot easier to keep up with what's going on in the green chemistry community. So you can visit www.greenchemistryportal.org. Or if you're viewing the webinar at your computer, you can see the uh, uh, website address at the bottom of the screen to see what the portal can do for you. And we're always happy to hear feedback and hear new ways that the portal can help you. So please don't hesitate to reach out and ask the moderator if you have a question or a comment. Great. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, and let me just uh, wrap it up by saying just three great presentations providing an overview of this resource. And the development of the, the Green Chemistry Innovation Portal has really benefited from an exceptional amount of input from industry, from academic institutions, from the ACS community, um, from the Launch Partnership uh, Innovation Challenge Program. Um, it's been evolving and, and growing, and as you heard from John, from Tom, and from Anna, um, our hope is that this become a resource, as John said, a match.com for green chemistry, as Anna said, a, a community. Um, to use sort of Hillary Clinton-type language, it takes a village to build a child. It, you know, so this is, this is our way of helping to build that green chemistry community by connecting those with problems, with those with solutions. Um, and helping to grow the field. And, and the initial Ask the Innovator session is really about a model for how you might do that. If you have suggestions for other types of uh, efforts that the portal could undertake to bring together uh, uh, those who have problems with problem solvers around a particular technology, around a particular uh, uh, educational effort, please do let us know. Um, so with that, let's jump into the, uh, the uh, uh, question and answer, I wanted to start by asking a question of John. Um, John, let's say I'm a business person and I'm really used to making my connections in person at conferences to connect to those who might have solutions to my problems. So why would I go to the, uh, the Green Chemistry Innovation Portal instead? Hey, thanks, Joel. Well, I, I think the value of the portal would be the speed and also the fact that you could get different perspectives. You know, all, all of us have our own Rolodex and, and uh, the go-to folks, and most of the time that serves us, but other times it would be great to get a different perspective. And I, I think there's a lot of innovation out there that folks just haven't figured out how to connect yet. So I wouldn't necessarily stop my, my personal connections, but I would, I would throw it out there to see if, if it's something that I could share publicly. Other people could learn from it as well. But being able to tap into that bitter, bigger audience, I think, would be a, a real bonus for us. Great. Thanks. Tom, I've been trying to find a funder to support my academic research that can be applied in industry. Um, can the portal, portal help me with that? Well, that's a great question. Um, I think uh, probably indirectly it could help with that. Looking at funding, uh, of course, you're always looking at different buckets of money and where they're coming from. Is it coming from the feds? Is it coming from private industry and so on and so forth? I think, uh, as anyone knows, is pitching a, you know, a research proposal uh, or an application, you have to have that good idea. And that good idea has to be aligned with uh, your audience. Uh, you know, the reviewers, and, but also uh, the market audience. So I think the, um, the innovation map is a good place to look for that kind of first path, indirect, uh, looking for alignment, looking for alignment in what is the mission of that company that's in the map 
uh, does that mission align with what you're proposing, uh, and so on and so forth. The same is true uh, with some of the institutions that are listed. So I'd say indirectly, it could be very helpful for someone to, um, it's called a map for a good reason. You know, it's laying out a landscape for people to look at opportunities. And uh, I think in that sense, it's very, very helpful. Great. Um, Anna, let me ask you a question. Well, two questions. Um, one is um, the portal national or international? And then uh, secondly, uh, what fact checking is there on the information that goes on the portal? That's a great question. The innovation portal and the innovation map in specific uh, is meant to be an international thing. So because it's developed by the GC3, our membership does lean more towards the American side of things. But you can see in the regional view on the innovation map that there are a lot of U.S. companies that are sorted by state, but then there are also European companies and companies based out of Asia. And uh, we are going to implement a worldwide regional view soon to sort that uh, more explicitly. So uh, you'll be able to benefit even outside the U.S. when the map is fully developed. Uh, and the forum side of the portal is also international. So uh, as you can see in my example, we had a chemistry teacher from Iran asking a question. We've had discussions about German PhD programs and so on. So the forum side is already very much an international effort and it's going to continue to be so. And then as for the second question, um, there's not an official fact-checking staff. But the strength of the Innovation Forum is that it's open for everybody to see. So if somebody posts something that's blatantly false and somebody else from the same field gets onto the forum, they can say, now, wait a minute. That doesn't sound quite right to me. Let me post a response. And that's where we actually see some of the most fruitful discussions around green chemistry happening. For example, there was one uh, post that was about green chemistry PhD programs, but actually uh, in Germany, that got quite contentious where we had uh, one participant saying, you know, I, I went to a green chemistry, or I did a PhD in Germany in chemistry and I had a lot of trouble finding jobs and I, the academic environment there was really challenging for me. And then we had other users coming on and saying, well, I think that information is maybe a little outdated. I'm doing a PhD in Germany now and I don't see any of the same problems. So it's very much a crowdsourced effort to fact check, and we find that that actually produces more interesting results than having an official fact checking staff. Great. Thanks, Anna. Um, for John, do you think company staff would be reluctant to use this lest they reveal something their firm considers confidential? So again, how do you, how do you sort of deal with that sort of providing information on technologies that may be confidential or you may want to protect? Yeah, I think I think there's there are going to be things that we're going to want to put out there from the pre-competitive space that we we actually want many people to to engage in, and and we want to be able to share that information. And and I think those we can put them out there. You know, everybody will need to make sure that that they understand what is okay to put out there from their own company perspective. But what I think you'll find is that there's an awful lot of things that we we do want to share. Now, on the other side of that, you may be looking for something that would solve a problem that maybe you don't want discussed openly or that might bring some kind of innovation in that, uh, again, you, you might want that first mover uh, advantage. Uh, but, but we have ways on the, 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 the portal that we can separate those ty types of some that are some uh, relatively anonymous and others that are public. So. I think there's something for everybody there, Joel. Great. Thanks, John. And with that, let me ask a question about uh, whether, Anna, if someone posts a question, there's no answer. Is there a way for the moderators to connect those people to someone who might be able to answer that question? Yeah, that's actually one of the strengths of the Innovation Forum, as opposed to any general forum that's out there on the Internet. And that's the fact that um, this portal is supported heavily by both the GC3 and the ACS Green Chemistry Institute. So between these two organizations, we cover the gamut from businesses interested in green chemistry to nonprofits to academia to government and so on. We cover the, all of the sectors that are involved in green chemistry. So with our expertise, 
um, we're, that's what we're offering up in this innovation forum is the opportunity to ask a question and have somebody who's very well networked to look at it and say, oh, I know who should be answering this question. So what we try to do is make sure that no question goes unanswered by uh, sending out an email or picking up the phone and calling somebody who can answer your question on the Green Chemistry Innovation Forum as soon as it's posted. Great. Um, let me ask you a follow-up there, Anna. Um, how is the portal organized in terms of the information on it by topic or by thread? Or, you know, if I'm, I'm trying to find something quickly on a particular technology, it, how do I find that? Yeah, so there are a few different ways that you can find the specific answer that you're looking for. Uh, first, the forum is indexed on Google, so you could try, try just Googling Green Chemistry Innovation Portal and a few keywords related to your topic. Secondly, there's also tags that are attached to each post, um, but some users don't use them necessarily, but we do try to go through and tag each post with relevant uh, categories. So if you're looking for something that's related to education, you could use the education tag to try and find the related posts in the forum. And finally, there are official categories, which are sort of like folders that posts are filed in. So, for example, the job board category has postings about jobs that are available that might be related to green chemistry. So if you go to the Green Chemistry Forum homepage and click on job board, it'll show you all of the posts that have been essentially filed under that category. And you can scroll through and see if anything matches what you're looking for. Another technical question, Anna. Um, is it easy to get alerts? So if you've posted a question that you'll know when someone's responded? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually very easy. Um, you can follow the discussion. You can follow a discussion thread, or you can follow the entire forum by clicking the green follow button that shows up in the upper right of the web page. And if you click that button and then select the option that says messages, then you'll actually get emails to the account that, um, or to the email address associated with your account. But that's if you're posting from an ACS ID that you've created for free. And if you haven't created an account, you'll have to create one in order to follow the discussions that you're interested in. Yeah, let me follow up, Anna, and just say that this is a free resource. It doesn't cost anything for you to post a question in it. You just need a, an ACS member account, right, which is free to get. Well, let me clarify that, because an ACS member is a paid membership, but an ACS ID, just a technicality, is a free account on the ACS network, which is their social community. So you don't have to be an ACS member to participate in the forum. You just have to create an ACS ID, which is free and takes about 30 seconds. Great. Thank you. Um, let me ask a question for um, John and for Tom. Um, you know, uh, uh, well, two questions. One is, what's the business proposition for a portal like this? How, how does it how does it survive long term? You know, what what's the how does it keep itself going um, and ensure that it has enough participation? You know, what what's what do you think is the the strategy to make that happen? And then secondly, um, how do you think a green chemistry entrepreneur or a startup could use the forum to gain feedback from the community on their business plan? Okay, well, hey, Joel, this is John. I'll, I'll start with the first one. Um, the, the whole idea of, of creating this portal um, really came from some of the, the innovators' roundtable meetings that you would host, but also some of the green chemistry and engineering conferences. Um, we, we would see a lot of folks come really excited about green chemistry, which is exactly what we want and, and we, we, we need. What we were worried about is that people would come, especially from from companies where they might be the only resource, or maybe they're not a chemist or a chemical engineer, and they would go back and not necessarily know how to, to apply some of the, the green chemistry principles to solve a problem or to bring innovation in. And Really, what we were trying to do with, with the portal is set it up in a way where those people were, could connect to experts who would happily help them or point them in the right direction or connect them with someone else. So that's really where the concept came from. And then how does it sustain itself? I think that's a question that will go on for a while. Um, if we bring more people to the green chemistry um, society to the to the green chemistry practitioners of the world. 
I, I think what we will do is do a better job of retaining them in in that in those roundtables, at those conferences, in those communities. And from there, I think we will have different different opportunities to help fund things like this. Um, it, it's it's a good question. I know there's I know there are other uh, resources out there where they try to charge for uh, solving something, or there's a prize for this or that. Um, and I think they're, those are great and have a, a great space. But I think we we're trying for something that started much more at a, a grass uh, uh, grassroots level. So, sadly, that's the only question I can remember now. <laughs> the second one is I've got a business plan, right? I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm trying to get some input on my business plan. Um, do you see the portal as a good uh, resource for that? Or yeah, how I do. I think. Oh, sorry. Is this? How could they use this resource as well? So, so if I if I was smarter and I and I had come up with something that was innovative and I was looking for a, a way to uh, propagate it out there, um, this would be one of the first places that I would look. Is I would look to see who what kind of problems were sitting out there that needed to be solved and would my uh, invention or my innovation uh, have any application there? And, and by being able to quickly connect to the folks that, that uh, need it, I think that would uh, take a lot, of the, a lot of the worry about how do you launch a new business out there because then you'd see, you'd see who the, the, the needy were and how do you connect with them. Um, and then on the other side of it, you could post, you could, drop out there what you have and let folks who are looking for a solution come, come and seek you out too. So I, I do think it's a two-way street that should make things quicker. Now we have to reach that critical mass where there's enough um, um, in, you know, excitement and enough uh, folks logging onto the website that, that, that really uh, helps itself. But I, I think we can do that. I'd, I'd like to add to that that uh, I think for the entrepreneur, uh, you know, information is power, information is value, but it's got to be the right kind of information. You can get lost in a sea of, uh, you know, data or information, uh, but organizing it in a way that it becomes intelligence is important. So I think the the portal can be useful in that way. You know, as John said, yes, you can. You might be able to of um, uh, understand trends by what kind of work is being done by whom and where. That's, that's one aspect of it. But also in that initial intelligence gathering phase, you can see who the experts are in particular areas uh, that you might then uh, query more deeply. So I think it has those two aspects to it, definitely of great value. And when that value is seen, um, by uh, various organizations, then maybe some talking about a sustainable financial model, perhaps that will uh, come about. Uh, hard to tell, but I think it's very valuable in that intelligence gathering phase for any entrepreneur. Great, thanks, Tom. Let me ask the three of you um, question about metrics. Right? How do how how are we going to know if the portal has been successful? What kind of measurement, um, well, Anna, have you been looking at in the development of the portal, but also uh, John and Tom in, in thinking through how a resource like this, what, what, how would we measure success? I think there are a couple different ways that you can look at success in this case, uh, especially as the Green Chemistry Innovation Portal has two components. It has the map and the forum. So for the map, it's very easy to define success, right? It's where we have a reasonable picture of the green chemistry community, and there aren't really or any organizations that are left out. So right now we have over 400 organizations shown on the map, and they're all connected to a green chemistry effort of some sort, and we're adding more um, at, a, at a pretty high rate. So we aim to have over 500 by the end of the year. and. Um, I think that we are nearing nearing success there with having the entire green chemistry community reasonably represented on the map. The forum is a little trickier because the success of any, any forum depends on the audience coming back and contributing regularly. And I think that we'll see success when we have people posting on the forum 
you know, uh, let's say weekly, one post a week, I think we can call that a success with constant generation of new content or questions being asked and answered. Um, and we have metrics on the website to monitor that and we'll be able to say at some point, you know, we've reached that goal and we have at least one post a week that, um, that the forum is successful at that point. But there's also, you know, a number, a number of pivot points where we could decide that maybe that's not the way to go and instead we should look at number of active users who are visiting the website and clicking on something or number of users who are registered or number of users who are following the forum. So that's something that we're going to keep an eye out as the forum continues to grow and see what the most reasonable metric of success is. Tom and John, what do you think from sort of your perspective, um, John from the business perspective or Tom from the perspective of an organization that may be uh, a responder or just funneling questions or answers into the portal. Okay, I'll go again. This is John. So, you know, after trying to, to, to follow Anna's great answer there, that, that's a tough one, Joel. It, to me, it's going to be a little bit like taking, taking vitamins. You, you don't really know that they're, that they're helping you stay any healthier, you know, unless you, you, you take them. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be a hard thing for us to measure. But uh, what I think we will start to see is more and more folks engaging, and hopefully we can find a way to track some of the feedback from, from the success stories. I, I think those would help us all create those compelling business stories as to why green chemistry is valuable and how do we engage it within our company, whether we have you know, 500 chemistry people or chemical engineers or whether we have none. But how do we solve problems? Um, trying to get that feedback, I think, would help us all to understand the value proposition here. But um, if I'm within a company, I would I would try to leverage it as a way to have a, a bigger impact on the things that, that we try to do. Um, having, having just come from a large uh, company, I can tell you there's a lot of things that need to be to be solved in, in our industries. Um, but but many, many others as well, and far more than there are internal resources. So if I'm in the inside of a company, I would try to use this as a way to, to grow my network, to solve problems faster, um, be able to put out those questions that will, will be able to tap me into a, a whole different class and a different um, set of, of, of uh, researchers than, than I would have had access to before. I, I think that's well said, John. I, I... If we were to use that metaphor of the matchmaker, I would say, well, these matchmaking, you know, uh, things on the internet, uh, how do they measure success? They, you know, how many people got married this month, you know, from OkCupid? Okay I don't. But may, maybe it's successful matchmaking and logging those stories because it is kind of hard to quantify some of the benefits of this kind of uh, uh, initiative. But I think it's very important. Uh, and there'll be individual stories out there of, of a chemist or a business person or a middle manager or so forth making a connection that he or she would not have made before. Um, so perhaps we need to collect those stories and, um, and show that, they, that they're, they are happening out there as this grows. Great. Thank you. And I just want to make a pitch here as we wrap up the webinar to say this portal is going to be successful when all of you join the portal. Um, the richer the conversation, the more the diversity of opinions, the more opinions, the more information, the more questions, those are what's going to make the portal successful. So I would um, just ask that as you leave the webinar today that you go to greenchemistryportal.org, that you look at the resources, that you sign up for the um, uh, within the ACS uh, uh, communities website that, that you sign up for the portal for the feed and that you become part of this growing community um, that we're trying to build here. This is uh, really for green chemistry to take off uh, in ways that it's been challenged to date. We need more minds. We need more participation. We need more activity. And that's always been the goal of the portal as we've uh, been working on it. So I just want to thank our three speakers, John Frazier, Tom McCug, and uh, Anna Ivanova um, for just a great overview of the portal. So thank you everyone very much for joining this uh, largest GC3 webinar to date. 
and have a great afternoon.